Hey everyone, welcome to episode 33 of Heroic Nonsense. We're one year in and going strong, so if you enjoy these videos and what I do here, I would totally appreciate your support with a subscribe and likes so we can keep growing this community and I can keep sharing with you this passion of mine. But for now, let's get this week's show going with Transformers Generations Comic Edition Straxus, the Decepticon dictator who has been left to his own design by Megatron and Polyhex to reign in terror and imposes brutal will over anyone who dares cross his path. Now I have to admit, I didn't recall much about Straxus from back in the original G1 comic book days, and he would have faded into the recesses of my mind to forever be forgotten had Hasbro not decided to release him. And even after I saw him, I wasn't sure that we'd ultimately get him because he was so obscure and let's face it, a bit odd looking at first glance. But boy am I happy we picked him up, especially after reading up on the history of this character and seeing this leader class bot based off of Galvatron's siege mold with enough retooling to give him his own personality. He spanned a bunch of different iterations of the comic books, though as far as I can tell has never appeared in the G1 continuity cartoon and has been reinterpreted and expanded upon several times. But in all versions, he's as evil a Decepticon as you can find and always seems to be a member of the Decepticon ruling class in one way or another. Add all that in with a quite imposing and unique looking figure and alt mode with a very cool paint job and an almost serpent like face and you have a Decepticon that just begs you to include in your collection. So taking a look at him in this static shot, it's immediately evident that he is a bigger than life character and toy in his royal blue and blood red colors, his unique bruiser like design and sporting that crazy mask which would fit right into the ranks of Cobra. I have to spend some time on his face with those menacing black dead eyes sharply cut into his mask that sports a flared hood, fangs and a coiled non-defined head. He also has this awesome black Decepticon symbol on that hood with some further black highlights on the mask which is perched on his red chest creating a very cool contrast. The rest of his upper chest also has these very 80s retro future looking triangular symbols with some light silver spots up against the blue to give it that comic book feel which is a nice design element in its own right. I also really like the red middle part of his chest with that rectangular grid that creates some nice aesthetics when mixed in with the rest of the chest design. Straxus also has some lighter whitish gray elements to him, specifically the upper legs and lower arms, which is also used for his fairly big axe, which fits right in place with the character's design and personality. He also comes with a second weapon, this sawed off cannon, that I actually do like, though really only fits in his hand as there are no ports on the lower arms to allow it to be used, in the same way the fusion cannon is used on Galvatron. When wielding his axe in battle, Straxus can store his cannon on his back which fits in really nicely and can even be used as a type of jet backpack thruster for him to fly above his victims on the battlefield. Alternatively, when he needs to bring in the heavy firepower, Straxus can place his axe on his back using a different port. I love the way this looks given the size of the axe and how it holsters in place, something I could easily imagine on a viking. I'm showing this image for two reasons. Firstly, you can see the missing port for the cannon on his lower arms as compared to Galvatron, and secondly, because it shows some of the comic book aesthetic that the series uses. There really aren't too many of these comic accurate lines on this figure and can almost go unnoticed as compared to a figure like Comic Book Edition Shockwave, for example. The legs are pretty much the only other section that have these design elements with some of those silver spots we saw on the chest. As we wrap this section up, I simply want to show how this figure looks in totality from the different angles and highlight the almost non-existent empty spaces in the plastic, which is what you'd want in a figure like this. The only other part I have to call out are the legs of the cannon, which stow away on the arms and kind of stick out, similar to the tracks on Galvatron's arms, though less bothersome here given the less iconic nature of this figure, which means you can be a bit more fluid with these design elements. Let's turn our attention now to this beast of a cannon, and more specifically a flying sonic cannon from what I understand. Now I love Galvatron and his emblematic futuristic cannon alt mode ever since I saw it in Transformers the movie, but I do have to say that Straxus's alt cannon mode is actually pretty cool looking and impressive as far as Cybertronian cannons go. Knowing that he is technically a cannon that can fly in space, which I guess Galvatron's is as well but more of a secondary trait, I do like the way the design tries to give it a more aerodynamic feel. However, I still think I prefer imagining it as a ground cannon, like Galvatron, that can fly in space if needed. I also love the idea of having a second cannon of this type in the ranks, and having a character that borrows his design from the most powerful leader of the Decepticons. The blue really stands out here and looks amazing, rather than having a multicolored cannon given the various contrasting colors seen in bot mode. I kind of want to see a red version of this cannon now, but appreciate the red highlights along the side. 
Straxxus in this mode looks amazing from this angle because of how he is designed, with a low clearance and more head-on design due to the positioning of the front cannon stabilizers. Dare I say I like it better from this angle than Galvatron? His stabilizers also have this 80s blocky computer type design which is pretty neat and we can further see those silver dots around the outer cannon assembly. The side view is also very cool and I love the way the red paint forms a stripe straight down the side. You can see some of the comic book aesthetic here on the cannon legs and front and back parts of the cannon. Though again discreet enough that you don't necessarily notice them if you prefer a cleaner transformer toy. From the top view, you can see how the axe fits on with the edges of the axe flaring up to fit a bit better in with the overall look of the cannon. The flight look of the figure is also apparent from this angle with those cannon legs sticking out way more than Galvatron's and almost at a 90 degree angle giving it a bit of a wing feel. Alright, let's jump right into the transformation of this monster. We're going to start with the axe. We're going to remove it like that and take off the cannon from the back. And I'm gonna flip it back around so we can push in the fists. You see this little tab here, it's gonna fit right into the top. Clicks right in, nice and snug. And then this extra piece, which forms part of the leg, is just gonna clip right in there. And we're gonna do the same here. So let's push in the fist, rotate this up 180 degrees, and then Put this part of the leg in by clicking the tab in right here and that's pretty much ready to go we're going to pull off the sides here do the same on this arm pull it right down so that it unlocks the back and you can take off this part so that we can freely move the back of the cannon open it up and we lift up the front to hide his head inside this kind of cannon part and then we can lower the whole thing down like this. Now let's move to the back and we're going to flip up these little leg guards. I don't really know what to call them. They're, they're more there for aesthetics. We're going to do the same here. We're going to tab it right into the uh, little tab on the side of the leg. Like that. There we go. And we'll take the feet, flip these back portions in. Now turn the legs out 90 degrees and lift each one up 90 degrees, like so. I like to do that first before clicking them in and then lower the front portion down. Now you can see how the cannon's kind of starting to form. And now we're just going to take these back legs and click them all together. There's a couple of joint, a couple of spots where you can actually do that. And then just make sure everything's nice and straight. Could get a little wonky and make sure these are kind of out of the way. And then just flip this forward, it clicks into place and make sure the back part clicks in to the legs. And that's pretty much it for the top part. We're going to lift up these two portions. Um, that's not in Galvatron. And we're going to flip these two parts out, which were on the hip. And then you can see that as we bring this down, there's some tabs right there and some more tabs over here. And we're going to just click them all together. You're going to hear them tab in and just close, close those little winged parts off. We'll do the same on this side. Click it in and then just tab that part in. Then we can open up the legs like so. Like I said earlier, these are going to be more flush with the ground. And then this part comes out a little bit different than Galvatron. It doesn't go all the way down. But that's fine given the uh, the way this cannon is designed. Just play around with it a little bit till it makes this shape. And now we're going to take the axe. We're going to flip up the wings, basically a 45 degree angle, and it clicks right into the tab at the top. 
and now we can take the actual cannon itself and it slots in really nicely right here and straighten everything out and there you have it Straxus transformed into his flying cannon alt mode The only really significant comparison I'll be showing in this part is the one up against Galvatron, in this case using the toy accurate version of the figure because I really like the way they look together. I'll show some more comparisons later on as part of the build and display part, including with the comic book accurate shockwave. As a side note, I think I will ultimately display these two guys together in our collection not only because they look great together, but also because I really didn't know how to use this version of Galvatron and now I do. I'll go into more detail over the next few images, but overall it's quite evident there has been a fair amount of retooling, which is great. From a transformation perspective, it's almost identical, but look-wise they do have a number of apparent differences. For one, the colors are very different, though complementary, which is why I like posing these two guys together. Everything from the chest and shoulders to the waist and legs have been updated. Even just looking at the waist here reveals how much effort was put into changing out as many parts to Galvatron as possible. I do miss the Decepticon symbol on the chest though. The main base mold for the bottom portion of the legs is the same, but the trimmings have significantly changed with Galvatron's design extending past the knee and having a more distinct overall look. In a weird way though, I feel Straxus's bottom legs look sleeker, which is a good thing. The lower arms may seem similar from a first look, but like the legs, they have undergone a number of aesthetic and functional changes, the latter being around the missing port that allows for Galvatron's cannon to attach. Straxus's arms are also a bit boxier and have different engravings. From a side view, not much to differentiate the two, other than the tank track being replaced for the stabilizers on Straxus, some differences on the back, which we'll see more of in a minute, and again the boxy lower arms. You can get another view here of the differences between the legs, which show how the main base part of the legs are identical. Very hard to differentiate between the two backs when looking at them from this angle, with the main difference really only being the backpack portion of the back, which ultimately forms the top of the cannon in alt mode, and where you see more of the differences between these two. A bit of a closer look at the chest differences here, which are significant, as well as that shoulder armor which is meant to go straight up on Straxus versus the more angled version on Galvatron. Nice to see how different these faces look, and always nice when a new face mold is used for a different character. Otherwise, the upper arms are identical. And if you do want to attach a smaller size cannon to Straxus's arm, you always can on the upper port, though it only really looks good in an action shot. On second viewing of this picture, I just noted that those cannon stabilizer legs actually kind of look like a cannon type laser assembly, which is definitely something you can do to explain away those bulky protrusions in bot mode. No matter what, the cannons are generally going to look the same since they are so unique to begin with and both meant to functionally be the same. However, there are still some significant differences in the design details. From a side view, the major differences that stand out are around the tank treads versus the more flat stabilizers, but not only in design but in functionality as well as the legs on Straxus are meant to give it a more closer to the ground look. Galvatron is also a bit longer given the size of his laser cannon. From this angle you can see the big difference in height of the cannons because of how the legs are designed and placed with a corresponding change to the back. You also have a bit of a design change around the cannon base with the two sides of Straxus's chest with the red arrows closing in around the circle of the cannon. Straxus's cannon is, as mentioned, designed differently and I may even prefer it a bit, strictly speaking to design, as compared to Galvatron's because of the overall cannon look to it. The axe is placed on the back here rather than the mechanical portions of Galvatron's laser, with the axe being able to be slightly flared up to give Straxus's cannon a bit of cohesiveness and fluidity. Much closer look at the cannon legs here, which have basically been completely redesigned for Straxus. Generally the same base design here, though having a big difference on the top design elements and placement of the axe again. Because of how the legs have been redesigned, the back stabilizers don't open up as much for Straxus as they do for Galvatron, again giving Straxus a more low to the ground look. So overall the same mold but two very cool looking cannons that each have their own unique elements and feel, and I think they look fantastic together. Now onto the design and build ideas. Because Straxus is not a main character that has appeared consistently in mainstream Transformers media, there isn't as much to go on based on the toys we currently have, and because of that I've taken a bit of liberty on who I'd place him with for displays. Like I said earlier, Galvatron is my favorite, and I will most likely place these two together. And why not throw in Cyclonus in his toy accurate colors as well? 
What do you guys think? Do you like this combo or have a different idea for this version of Galvatron? You can of course always put all three cannons together, though I prefer to split them up for displays. More of a shot to show you how cool they look together. Now playing a bit fast and loose with his comic background, I based this idea off of his IDW run mostly as he was specifically called out as a senator of Darkmount in Polyhex. And who else to place him with than the other two senators recently released, Senator Shockwave and Senator Ratbat. I personally like this senate storyline and idea in the IDW run, so this is a perfectly good way to display Straxus. I also think that Straxus looks pretty damn cool next to Senator Shockwave, and given their storyline in the Marvel run, with the one-eyed evil calculating Shockwave we know and love, this combo actually kind of makes sense. Taking it one step further, I thought it might be cool if Straxus was actually originally in the Gladiator Pits with Megatron when he was a miner, fighting off wave after wave of combatants together and forging that bond that would later have Straxus join the Decepticons. And why not throw Impactor into the mix as well, in his Decepticon persona and colors? And just like I did for my comic book Shockwave review, link here and below, I thought I'd give it a shot and replicate the famous comic book cover here. If you like these boxes, which I really do, and have the space and figures, this could be an awesome display idea, especially if you line up all three releases to date next to each other. This image comes from the Marvel G1 comic book story from the same story as the one this pack is based off of with Blaster, and since I had 90% of these figures, I replicated it here for some fun. Extra bonus points if you can tell which figure is missing. There's then a whole storyline with Straxus taking over Megatron's body and mine and Megatron clones involving Shockwave of course, so thought this might be a fun shot to take inspired by that storyline. These last few are my build ideas for what Straxus' team in my continuity would look like, and so I've placed him here with some lesser known seekers Redwing and Nacelle as his personal guard and building up his army with some other minor Decepticon characters that I thought would work well together. After all, if you're going to be a dictator over your very own region of Cybertron, you'll need your army and lieutenants. And your very own throne, in this case using star screens from the Studio Series 86 Coronation release, which fits quite well with Straxus. Adding back in his personal guard, you have a nice little display idea right here. And since Straxus is technically a flying cannon, let's have them all transformed and flying through space or over Cybertron, with Straxus being flanked by Redwing and Nacelle again. I also think these three look great together. Let's take all the Decepticons with the craziest head designs and put them together in a shot. I didn't expect to like this setup as much as I did. And finally, back to Cybertron, the Senate, and IDW. Legacy Evolution Nova Prime with his personal guard and soon-to-be Senator Straxus. This one was more for a bit of fun since I did all the other bots from this subline. With the multiple storylines already in existence for Straxus, why not add one more? Because this is a special edition release, it gets a nice special edition box. This is definitely a collector's item and if I were going to keep any boxes, these would be at the top of my list. With the front panel being the comic book replica featuring Blaster and Straxus. The side has some more action packed panels from the comic with the back incorporating even more comic book panels with images of the actual figure and the 40th anniversary logo. I really like this colorful panel found on the other side panel of the box, which I feel may have been drawn for this release, but I'm not entirely sure. If anyone knows, let me know in the comments. Just seems a bit more modern and colorful. Great idea for this box to open up like a comic book to reveal the figure inside, similar to the previous two releases. With more comic book art on the inside panel and a nice overall background summary of Straxus for those unfamiliar with his character and just bought him because he looked cool. And finally, something we don't always see, but a top panel with even more art. So that brings us to the end of this episode. Hope you enjoyed this review of a more obscure Decepticon, which actually has a good amount of history. And because of that, presents itself with a lot of opportunities for stories and display ideas. If you enjoy collecting truly evil Decepticons, this is a toy for you. Not sure where we're headed next week. Could be G.I. Joe, could be another Transformer. I have lots of new figures to open. Whatever it is, hope you'll join me back here. And remember, it's all such heroic nonsense in the end. Dragon!